Good afternoon or good evening everyone and welcome to our second um, meet and greet session here at the LEGO Group with our digital team. So I can see that it's very dark everywhere in the world. I've just been chatting to the Denmark team and I can see that it's very dark here in London as well. So my name's Andy Patterson. I work within the talent team here at the LEGO Group and we are very excited to welcome you to our second session. So we've got an action-packed agenda here today. So we have got some awesome speakers from across our digital team, um, both in Copenhagen and in Billund in Denmark. And we're going to take you through our digital roadmap. We're going to introduce you to our digital Copenhagen office. Um, we're going to take a deep dive into some of our key speakers in digital agile development, or the DAD team as they're known. And um, we're going to look at architecture and tech um, before we then dip into design um, with Jana. Now, I can see that we've got some um, over 45 people signed up at the moment who are watching live, so welcome wherever you are in the world. Um, please tell us in the chat, say hi, tell us where you're from. Um, before we then um, dip, dip into the session and welcome our speakers on board, there's two additional sessions that we've got. One will be um, taking a look at what it's like to work behind the bricks um, and to work at the LEGO Group, and then we'll have a Q&A session um, at the very end. So if you do have any questions during today's session, then feel free to use the ask a question um, button on your screens. We'll do our best to answer them either during the speaker sessions or at the end of um, the session in the Q&A time. So who have we got um, today? So we've got Christian Toftel from Digital Agile Development. We've got Yana Kirlund from the design team. We've got um, Lead Platform Architect Kenneth Christensen, and without further ado, I'd like to welcome Lisa Stoy Rodel from the Digital Agile Development, who's leading the recruitment of our team who will be based in our Copenhagen office. So, um, by the wonders of technology and my amazing helper, we should have Lisa joining us on screen now. Hi, how are you? Hello, Andrew, and thank you for the introduction. Welcome, welcome. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Lisa. Well, if it's all right with you, Andrew, I would like to start another place and wow. say thank you to all of you out there tonight and who are watching the video afterwards. So to all of you attendees, um, thanks for your time and interest and uh, also for all the kind greetings you've already put forward, not only to me, but also uh, the team around. Uh, it's amazing. So thank you. But back to your question, Andrew, and a little bit of an introduction to myself. Um, my name is Lisa, and I, I've been with LEGO for more than six years. Um, I started as a leader in uh, uh, what was at the time called the Data Warehouse Team. Uh, at that time, I'd, for many years, I've been in different uh, roles uh, within IT uh, or tech. Um, and I landed here in a huge project, uh, the biggest tech project in the history of LEGO, at least at that time, uh, with focus on uh, internal uh, data warehouse, uh, SAP, BW, um, uh, where I was uh, the leader of an awesome team. And we had some very ambitious goals. Uh, after a few years, and I think this is very typical Lego. it's a big company uh, with position you can only imagine uh, when you are on the outside of the walls. But I was um, fortunate to uh, tumble across uh, a man called Christian Ventsuk. Uh, he was then, and he is also today, uh, the leader of digital uh, agile development, the, the area we are representing today. And he's also my leader today. Uh, at the time I met him, he had already uh, moved the whole organization uh, and all the business partners we were collaborating with into uh, agile ways of working. Uh, for me personally, um, the thought of being part of uh, this journey where uh, releasing code uh, in the consumer engagement space where what you do today is seen by millions and millions around the whole world, um, that was just something I had to be part of. Uh, so to, uh, the rest is history. Today, uh, my heart, I've, I've been in various roles here, but, but today my heart really beats for our dear legal account. Some of you might know it. I hope you do. Uh, otherwise, please do try and sign into one of our digital experiences. Um, but that is the key to our consumer ecosystem. Uh, but also product insights and data is really high on my agenda still. But 
more important, I'm also heading up uh, a bunch of awesome engineers that is working hard every day um, to deliver uh, awesome uh, digital products. And uh, the reason why I'm here today is also that I'm um, leading the, the initiative around opening uh, a new digital location in Copenhagen. So at present time, and enough about me, um, you can say in this world uh, where Lego, where we are, um, our aim is really to inspire the builders of tomorrow. Uh, it's all about reaching as many children as possible with a true Lego experience. Um, and to do that, uh, we have, first of all, it needs to be an awesome experience, that first touch. Uh, we want to see them uh, more and we want to engage and we want to know all about them and, and serve their needs. But um, for that, digitalization is the core. It's uh, the foundation of our plans to bring uh, learning through play to even more children around the world. So uh, you can also say it in, in very short, over the coming years, we'll significantly accelerate the digital transformation as a company. And we have um, not only high ambitions, but we are also ready now to accelerate that journey. Um, today, I don't know if you know that, but we are more than 700 uh, engineers or uh, you can say colleagues around the globe working with digital or within digital, and we'll accelerate uh, that. So to help attract the right uh, engineering and digital talent, um, we have established a digital Copenhagen office. And it's right in the center of Copenhagen. It's in uh, located in Østergel, um, the uh, an old historical building, it's, it's really wonderful. Um, 10 minutes walk from the main uh, train station and five minutes from the metro, it's uh, really easy to commute. Um, the, the majority of, uh, of the people uh, and the colleagues sitting and will be sitting in the digital Copenhagen office will be part of the same teams. And we work with full featured product teams. That's the way we work. Uh, so they'll be focused on a product or a work stream. And we'll, we'll come back to what that means. So our aim for this meet and greet is that you, uh, both online and, and watching this video later on, uh, want well, we hope uh, that you want to help us scale our digital organization and the platform uh, significantly, but also that you or someone uh, that uh, you could recommend in your network would find this as interesting as we do. Uh, and you will hear we are very passionate and bear with us. Um, but but uh, we hope that you uh, uh, will come and help us and build this foundation and not only for the products, but also uh, helping us uh, set the, uh, the foundation for the digital office in Copenhagen. Um, yeah. Super. Thank you very much for that introduction. Um, and that's great. So um, as I said at the beginning, this is our second session and we wanted to ensure that we've got enough time for Q&As at the very end. So as I said in the chat, any questions, use the chat function. We will um, make sure that all of our speakers are back on screen at the end. Um, we will be able to sort of pitch the questions and, and have much more screen time than we had in our first session. So, Lisa, thank you very much. Um, our next speaker is Christian Tofto. Um, and again, by magic, um, Christian should appear up on screen. Give him a little second. Hopefully he'll appear. Here he is. Hello. Perfect. Hi, Christian. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Um, much for taking part today. Um, yeah, over no to you. Tell us about Digital Agile Development and your area. And tell us a little bit about yourself to begin with. Sure. So where to start? Uh, I, um, I My background is uh, from yeah digital from the late 90s, where I was um, part of a startup, as many other people that crashed in the dot-com wave. And since then, I before I joined Lego, I have been in different uh, IT or digital roles in different primarily consultancy companies. But I've actually been with Lego for 11 years now. Uh, started out in a specialist role as a you know, tech product owner for some of our platform uh, products. And around five years ago, I became a leader in, in DAD, 
uh, and has Lisa as my colleague. Um, and I mainly work with uh, a lot of our teams that, that, that build uh, consumer experiences, both in the app space, game space, uh, digi our digital building instructions, uh, and a lot of prototyping as well. So that's a little bit about me, um, and I'll jump to talking a little bit about uh, DAD. Um, so uh, digital agile development is actually it's actually the original, you can say, digital department inside Lego. It was actually formed uh, in the early 2000s uh, when we first launched uh, uh, Lego.com. Uh, back then, with only I guess uh, three people, we have grown a lot since the, uh, since then. Um, today, we are around uh, 180 uh, colleagues in in DAD working. Yeah, it's it's kind of an even split between external and internal people, but but those uh, colleagues are forming the around 20 uh, product teams that we have uh, in in DAD uh, today, and all of these product teams are working on uh, on consumer facing. Uh, experiences. So no internal tools, no SAP, no um, internal flows. We are working towards our end consumers uh, and in our different audiences. And a lot of you guys on the call will probably think, okay, Lego, that equals kids. And that is to a large extent, uh, extent true, but we actually also have other audience that we cater for with our consumer solutions for instance, uh, parents and families, and also um, AFOLs, adult fans of Lego, which is quite a big uh, consumer group for us as, as well. That being said, we are primarily uh, building experiences for kids. That also means that we are very much, you know, uh, work very intensely with our play propositions in the products, also the digital products that we build, do extensive uh, kids testing and so forth. Uh, uh, we are also, yeah, there's someone says teachers. That's actually also true. We also do stuff for teachers. So, so we have, uh, we have quite a, a broad group, but that's actually not our department. That was probably why I forgot it. Um, so, uh, we are, um, building on a, on a modern, modern technology stack. Uh, and I think Kenneth will speak more to that. So I, I won't go into that, but, uh, to summarize kind of our mission uh, without being our official mission statement, but we are in the, um, we are in the business of building uh, great consumer products with a strong plate proposition uh, uh, and value proposition in general for our audiences. Um, I, when, I, when I kind of thought about how I could explain a little bit about how we, we are working I found it beneficial maybe to take a look back over the last 10 years that I've been part of this organization to look a little bit into what have actually happened over that uh, period of time. Because somehow our ways of working, our, uh, our progression in technology uh, and also the, you know, the change in our digital products has more or less followed uh, some phases. And basically, I think over the last 10 years, we can kind of see four distinct phases in our uh, um, journey of uh, agile journey, you can call it. So when I joined uh, Lego back in 2009, end of 2009, we were very much, uh, you know, just introducing Scrum, as I think a lot of you guys on the call are familiar with. Uh, and we were basically building kind of single purpose websites. So that was kind of our starting point, but we came from a waterfall uh, world uh, back then. And for, for us, that was a huge shift uh, uh, back then. Fast forwarding, uh, fast forwarding a couple of years, we begin to experiment with agile at scale. So uh, we, uh, we were working with safe as some of you guys might know uh, and uh, very much trying to cater for the teams of teams and 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 uh, more teams collaborating on on bigger digital uh, initiatives um, back then we also built kind of lego.com into a big monolith which is something that i personally regret a little bit today but we learned a lot from that experience and we also built a product called fusion some of you might know it. It's it's a little bit more of an obscure product that uh, Lego did back in 2014, I think. 
The reason why I mention it is because that's just actually the first time when we also moved into the cloud uh, space and we built uh, parts of that product uh, with cloud technologies. And the learning back then, it, that is something that we also kind of, uh, is part of our culture today, is very much that it was not a centralized decision to move into cloud technologies back then. That was done by the team that actually sat with that product um, and, um, and they decided this was the best approach to, to build with cloud technologies. And that has since then spread and now AWS, which was the cloud platform we, we used back then, is, is also still our preferred uh, cloud platform. Um, today and by the way fusion is was the first also of what we call hybrid play experience of, of fluid play experiences uh, which is basically where we combine physical and digital play so there's an a digital layer on top of our um, of our physical products we have others since then um, the third phase is maybe three years ago, we began to work with uh, full feature teams. So we basically, until then we have been very much functional divided, uh, but now we build our teams around uh, being as full featured as possible so we could minimize uh, handovers. I think probably some of you guys from the jobs you're sitting in has gone through a similar uh, uh, experience or sim similar um, change. But for us, that was basically to minimize dependencies and and kind of handovers in the process and get people to collaborate more uh, across also organizational units. But it's not until recently that we have, and that's basically phase four where we are today, where we have begin began to work with um, product outcomes more than feature development, I would say. So it's a big mantra for our department that we want to have a real impact with our consumers. We want to build digital products that matter to our consumer. So we can build the most perfect software in the world, but if it doesn't appeal to our consumers, what's the, what's the purpose then? So we have uh, embraced something called the OKR, uh, Objectives and Key Results Framework. Some of you might be familiar with that. But that's all about securing that we build the, um, the right products for our consumers. And we are not at the end of the, the road. We will uh, continue to learn and continue to kind of adapt and, and build uh, and, and push the limit to build uh, new great uh, digital products for, the, for our consumers out there. And I think I'll leave it at that. And if you have questions, then as Angie said, Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, and we're looking forward to welcoming you back on back on screen at the end um, to answer any questions. So thank you for that. Our next speaker is um, Kenneth Christensen, who's a lead platform architect. And um, Kenneth should be joining us on screen. Here he comes. We've got the right Kenneth as well. La our last session, we invited the wrong Kenneth on screen. So um, welcome, Kenneth. Thank you, Andy. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So I've been... I've been writing code for, for more than 20 years. I suddenly realized uh, by looking at my own profile. Um, but compared to, to my two colleagues, I'm relatively new in legal terms. I've only been with the company almost six years. Um, and during that time, I've been a uh, backend developer. I've been a uh, technical lead. And, and today I'm, I'm working as a what's known as a lead platform architect. Um, I'm running what is known as a stream inside Lego, uh, games and prototypes. Uh, what we actually do, you could probably dilute from the name. What we actually work on currently, I cannot discuss publicly, which is always interesting in these presentations. Um, but we're building awesome stuff for, for kids, um, bu building products and, and experimenting and basically having a, having a laugh doing it. If you move on, Andy, um, as you can see from the slide, I really, really enjoy making illustrious PowerPoint presentations. I've only put two bullet points on here. Um, Unity and backend. So Christian already alluded that we are working with Amazon, Amazon Web Services. 
And the journey that we're on is is not just taking backend systems and pulling them out of a data center and then pulling them onto a virtualized platform and putting them on a cloud somewhere and then saying, yes, we are now in the cloud. We're actually rebuilding and re-architecting everything um, and have been for, for quite a few years. So when we build systems, we built them for scale. We built them to be prepared to handle possibly millions of simultaneous sessions from both kids and adults. And we also built them to be safe. We built them to be compliant. Um, we built them to, to be structured in a way where we can actually utilize the, the managed functions from, for instance, the AVS provides. There's no reason for us to, to write our own queuing system if we can use a service that's already in existence. And again, Christian talked to, to empower teams. We work very much with the belief that the team itself picks the tools, picks the frameworks, picks the languages, decides on the methodology within reason to use for the products because they are the ones creating the product. They are the ones running the product. They are the product basically on these things. Um, if you talk to, to marketing people, they may disagree, but very much the tech stack in these things are what creates the product. And the next natural progression that we're on for, for the past few years have actually been to, to create these full featured teams where not only do we have the classical back-end teams handing over services to, to front-end teams, that could be front-end web developers, that could be Unity developers, we're actually putting them into the same team, sitting at the same desks, having the same meetings, talking to each other, knowing each other, collaborating and finding new ways of doing things and breaking down these silos. And the same actually goes with the designers. We're putting designers into these full features product teams. So it's one day it can be the backenders opening up the Unity projects, doing small iterations, merge requests, submitting for, for reviews. The next day it could be the designers actually going into Unity, changing properties on, uh, on game objects and adjusting things instead of having this classical handover where you deliver a full featured Photoshop design again back to the silos. So everyone is working in, in unison on these things. Uh, and I really, really love to share some of the awesome, cool stuff that we're working on. But um, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to. So um, you'll just have to trust me on this one. It's, it's amazing products. Um, when all that is said, what we're doing is also we're working with kids. So if you come from a traditional gaming background, you'll be all about the DAOs and the mouse and the, the insights and how can we track people, how can we collect all these things. And, and all of these things is a big no-no when it comes to kids. So we are working under a different rule set. Um, we are adhering to, to COPPA, GDPR, e-privacy, all of the, the local registration, registration around the world. Sorry, that's a difficult word last late in the day. Um, so we really, really have to be creative to be able to give the kids awesome experiences without collecting any data or any profiling that could be misused by, by anyone. So we are emphasizing the, the safe and the fun in the experiences. Super. Um, thanks very much, Kenneth. Um, one of the things that we always find super intriguing is the, the secrecy part. We did some um, some employer branding interviews with some of the designers, and it was exactly the same thing. They could tell us a little bit, but they couldn't tell us what they were designing. So it sounds like it's the same thing with you. So um, we would love you to come back up and join us at the end for some Q&As, um, but we would like to welcome our next speaker um, onto screen. Um, so Yanni Kierlund, who is a director in design. Um, Yanni, welcome on screen. Hey guys. Hey, how are you? Hey, Andy. I'm good. Thank Welcome. You. Again, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Andy. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, before I start, I will just give a small uh, uh, warning. I have a one and a half year old boy sitting <laughs> close to me watching some YouTube and he might suddenly be in front of the screen. So um, let's uh, let's see how it goes. Um, 
But hey everyone, I'm Janne. Uh, I have been with Lego for 10 years. Um, and there's actually a saying at Lego that have you been with Lego for five years, you are actually here for the rest of your career. And uh, and so far it, it could look like that. Um, a bit like Lisa said uh, on, you know, you start one place and you end another place at Lego. I think I'm a quite good example of the opportunities Lego gives you for personal and professional growth. Um, so when I started 10 years ago, I started as a marketeer, actually booking uh, TV spots and print ads in the Nordic Benelux uh, market. Uh, and today I'm the leader of the, the digital design and UX team in DAD. Um, so, so that's been quite a journey. Um, so the design team is a team of 18 dedicated and passionate uh, designers. Um, it's a, a quite diverse team. Uh, so we have designers who have just started and we have designers who have been with us for like 14 years. Uh, we have uh, both women and men, designers from all over the world. And we also cover, you can say, all skills from from hardcore UX architecture to, to really talented uh, UI guys. Um, and then we're always looking for, for the unicorn, the one that, that knows both uh, UX and UI um, and can take our product from, from the beginning to the end. Um, in addition to uh, the design team in, in DAD, we are also part of, you can say, a, a broader UX team uh, because we are around uh, 60 digital designers uh, throughout LEGO in, uh, in other uh, parts of the organization. Um, as uh, Christian and Kenneth said, we work in these uh, product teams, so all the designers are allocated for uh, different experiences. So as a designer, you are part of your product team uh, and you are part of uh, the design team as well. Um, and here comes trouble, <laughs> sorry. Um, so within the design team, uh, we also focus on other areas such as uh, design ethics, which I will talk a little bit more about uh, in a minute. Uh, we are creating a center of excellence for research and user testing. Uh, we look at the uh, tooling strategy, uh, create the uh, method catalogs and so on. And then of course, uh, we're building a design system to, to tie everything together. Um, we're definitely not there yet, uh, but, but we are of course constantly working on it. Um, all this is run by a design ops team. Um, and I saw a lot of, of communication from IKEA recently on their design ops, uh, we don't have a dedicated uh, design ops team. So the ones who work on design ops also work on products. Um, but it's a very nice way of making sure that what we create in the design ops team is uh, rooted um, uh, in the experiences as well. Um, so a few words on uh, our design ethics agenda. So I, I just want to talk a bit about uh, the kits as our uh, consumer, as Christian uh, mentioned, we also have adults and AFOLs. Um, but when it comes to kits, uh, we also talk a lot about design ethics. And when we design for kids, uh, we think a lot about the kids' needs um, because marketing often comes with a, a business objective that we, we need to try to solve. But in order to solve this, we need to create something that uh, solves the kids' needs. Um, and some of the things we're looking into is the need of, of being healthy. So this is very much around uh, well-being and you can say, uh, in the time we are now uh, with the uh, corona and uh, kids being exposed to to bad news all the time this gets even more important how we can can create something with the kids well-being in mind um, there's need to be social so when you build with lego you often build in solitary and we see digital as the way to add um, the social layer on this, we of course need to be super careful on, on how we do that um, when it comes to digital safety. Um, we are looking for the need for, for the kids to be creative, to be in control and to express themselves. And all this we want to tie into a bigger purpose. And, and here we're talking a lot about the, the 21st century learning skills uh, and how to deliver on the four big C's, which are about critical thinking, creativity, collaboration and, and communication. And how can we, we create experiences that also uh, cater for this? Um, so in other words, when we design for kids, well, uh, for kids we, we always uh, design for kids' well-being in mind. Uh, we design for the good for digital safety and we focus on diversity and accessibility. It's not always easy when you also uh, have some uh, some numbers you want to, to reach and, and I think it gives always a, 
a healthy um, discussion on, on how to actually do this. Um, our work is founded in our design principles, which we also use when we have feedback sessions within the design team. Um, and all this is rooted in our digital playbook, which is the foundation of everything we do. Uh, and our playbook, you can say, is also kind of the, the design system. Um, so that was a, a sneak peek into what's uh, what's going on in the design world at Lego. Over to you, Andy. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, it's great to have um, an extra participant. Some might think that um, that that was that was meant to happen, but it was great to have your son on board there as well. So um, we would like to welcome Yanni back up on screen and um, Christian Tofto, and we just want to talk a little bit about um, what it's like to work at the Lego Group. Um, so we'll give the guys a couple of minutes to rejoin. Oh, Kenneth is going to join. Perfect. Kenneth, um, and we should have Christian. Brilliant. Hi, guys. Welcome back up. Got, got a quick question for you in terms of trying to bring things alive. So we are known for our unique culture, our unique ownership. Um, people have seen the Netflix documentaries and stuff on TV and the internet. Um, you know, can you tell us from the inside what it's like, what our culture's like um, to someone that doesn't work at the Lego Group? Sure. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's a that's a broad question, I guess. But but I, I can I can uh, I can take a stab at it. I think um, I think what is is a, a commonality about our culture is that all people that I've met at least at Lego are very passionate about our products. So I think the products are something that unites us um, and kind of create a unique uh, culture in the sense that uh, this is something that that everybody rallies around, you can say. And that also may, even though we are different people and we have our arguments as well, I guess, in, like in any other company, I think we all share the common goal of, of, of creating um, awesome products to the kids and other consumers. But, but I think this about having kids as one of our main audiences all so something that really kind of creates a little bit of a different culture than than you normally see in, in many other other companies that I've been at at least. So that's at least one perspective on it. Kenneth, would you add anything to that? I think what we're seeing also is that we are a, a generation, a beginning generation of, of kids. I still consider myself a kid sometimes, I may look old, that grew up with the brick and is still in love with the brick and it's it's just awesome to work. At Lego with the bricks, we still play around. You've got, you've got the best background, right? So um, we did. Um, we, we both we're all in the office, apart from um, Yanni, Yanni and Kenneth. So it's great to see lots of Lego sets, um, Kenneth. So a um, couple of other questions. We've got on screen some of the benefits that we've got about what it's like working at Lego. So everyone would be um, wouldn't be surprised to see that we offer. Um, a very generous discount on Lego products, um, so our fans can um, buy lots and build lots with families at home. Um, but we've also taken a global approach to family care um, and to support our colleagues. So we've got family-friendly policies that are enhanced both for childcare options for both parents um, and where a colleague needs to um, care for a loved one during their time of need. Yanni, what does that mean in reality for you? And this wasn't planned at all to have your little boy in the background, which is great. Yeah, yeah and, uh, and sorry also for getting a bit uh, personal on this. Um, so the reason why yeah, my boy is here is that I'm actually um, an alone mum. So I came back from maternity leave uh, in May. And, uh, and um, I think, again, it's a quite good example of Lego and that you're actually able to be an alone mom, have a career, um, be the leader of a big team, and definitely a, a busy work day. Um, but with the flexibility Lego actually has, um, it, it works. Um, and I, I was not sure when I came back from maternity leave that it would work, but it does. Um, there is, of course, the <laughs> exception that when you have a five o'clock meeting, you have uh, someone in the background. Um, and there's a little bit of product placement there as well. We yeah, yes, lots of and this was really not intentional either, but well done, Vigo. <laughs> <laughs> You've got lots of, lots of Duplo in the background. One of the other flagship policies to support families that we've got is around um, insurance. So 
you know, and what does that do for, you know, as employees, what does having that, that insurance that both for disability and life cover provide for you guys? You know, if I was to ask you, um, I think maybe Kenneth, maybe ask, answer that question. It's a safety net, to be honest. Um, we have uh, in, in Denmark, it's, it's called Mulholm Insurance. Um, that not only covers me, but it also covers my wife and my three kids. Should anything happen, um, it, it's an amazing thing. I've never, I've never seen that before in any Danish company. I've seen it on employees, but not the entire family. Great, super. And that's um, those two standout policies are our flagship family support policies. So um, it's great, great to hear them in action. Now I've got one other question. I don't know who's going to take this one, but. Um, on Monday, we posted something on LinkedIn around um, the, the Lego um, Christmas set or the, the gift that employees get. Who wants to? You guys have been around for a long time, so tell us a little bit about what that is, because that's quite unique as well, isn't it? Yeah. Christian. Yeah, I can take this one. Uh, so uh, maybe because I've been here the longest of us on screen right <laughs> now, I guess. Uh, so I have the most sets. So uh, the thing is that every year, uh, Lego produces a, a unique set that is only for employees that is given uh, as a Christmas gift. Um, and last year it was the X, Christmas X-Wing uh, star from the Star Wars line uh, that was kind of uh, yeah made uh, available only for, for employees. So if you're a big Lego fan or a moderate Lego fan even, I think this is also a perk that is, is quite unique. Um, that you get these uh, sets that are not available uh, in retail. So, yeah. Fab. Look, we had a little teaser on that one on Monday. Um, I think Kenneth was showing us last, last year's gift there, which was great to see too. So I think at this stage, we're going to welcome Lisa back up on screen so we can do um, sort of additional Q&As. Now, I've got a couple of questions that I want to ask, and then I think there's about 10 in the stack ready for us to take. So if we want to invite Lisa back on screen, Maya, that would be amazing. Hello. Hey, how are you? Welcome back. You. Great session. We've got some great questions coming through. We've got, um, I think there's over 61 people um, watching live. So again, thank you to everyone that's that's dialed in and watching today. So um, question for the group then. So diversity, and this is more for you, Lisa, really, um, as the, the, the leading, um, the leader recruiting into the Copenhagen office. So diversity is high on everyone's agenda and we're no different at the Lego Group. What's the mm. biggest opportunity with hiring diverse talent for us? And that could be Elise, Christian or Jana because you're all people leaders, but maybe Elise for, because um, you're the, the, the person that's going to be responsible for the recruiting team. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's a great question and definitely something we, uh, we get a lot of response on and there's a lot of uh, dialogue around different forums around this. So you can say, um, we value all individual, the talents, uh, we value team spirit. And when we open up new positions, and, and really it doesn't matter if it's in Bilon or London or Singapore or now Copenhagen, uh, we are committed to, you can say, the equal employment. If you, if you, you can even see it in the text, like regardless of your color, uh, national origin, uh, age, whatever. But, but when in, I think that's very the political answer, but, but when it comes to it, and I, and I just had a really good uh, talk to one of our candidates earlier today, the opportunity we see, and also why uh, we actually do quite a lot when recruiting, is about, uh, yes, diversity is one aspect of it, but you can bring all the different genders, all the... Um, um, uh, differences in the world to the table uh, uh, and say uh, now we have um, uh, the opportunity to do that but if you don't cater to foster the environment where you uh, feel safe in bringing those diversity of skills and capabilities and ways of looking into the world and the ways you collaborate if you don't get that into play if you don't create uh, a culture that fosters the psychological safety as we call it it doesn't matter so when we hire in it's not only about uh, saying check to all the obvious about uh, gender and age group and backgrounds it's also a lot about the personality and the demonstrated uh, capabilities in the area so we see that as the biggest opportunity here um, when uh, digging into uh, what we can almost say is a new market here in Copenhagen. 
I don't know if that answered your question, Andy, but I just think there's so much more than uh, yeah. than just diversity uh, in this topic. It's, it's the buzz at the moment, isn't it? And it's about the breadth of it. It's never ending, isn't it? And I think we recognise yeah. through our commitments that um, we want to recruit and attract a diverse talent from across the globe, really. So, yeah, absolutely. It's a great, but, it, um, but, Andrew, it's also really, uh, I must say it's really important because the products, yeah, one thing is the audience is the kids. But if you look globally, we also have uh, single moms, we have families, we have uh, one where they share uh, a really old iPhone where our software needs to work. Uh, we have high-end uh, um, consumers who know every brick uh, ever made and every set. Uh, and if we don't have that kind of diversity within our teams, how will we cater for our audiences? So uh, a lot of opportunity to create awesome products uh, that our consumers hopefully love uh, when they are to meet and yeah, yeah, embrace. It's good, love it. So listen, we've got some questions. So if we take them from the top then, how does the digital office in Copenhagen align with the long-term strategy in terms of Lego's ambition with the agile scale up and the talent you're seeking? Can you share some insights on the kind of roles you're looking for, both technical and non-technical? Yeah. Again, sorry, Lisa, that's probably for no, you. No, that's fine. <laughs> You know, I could spend the rest of the day talking about this, so I'll try and keep it short uh, for even more great questions. So, um, yeah, uh, we mentioned it before. Uh, Billon is our headquarter, and uh, we have uh, teams, digital teams sitting in London and Singapore and, and other. Uh, so, so what we are opening up in Copenhagen is the digital location for product teams and, and uh, teams working within the streams uh, that Kenneth talked to before. That means uh, when we say product teams, that's full featured product teams. So if you go online now to .com, you will see we are looking for uh, engineers the, uh, in different um, uh, variations, you could say. So it's testers, it's uh, Unity developers, it's backend developers, it's uh, design, UX, uh, it's uh, tech leads who can take on the delivery lead role. Uh, and we see uh, as we'll grow, we'll start in 21 with uh, a small foundation in Copenhagen and in 22, 23, it will really accelerate where we'll open up uh, um, a, a lot of new um, uh, both space, but also uh, teams there. So as the digital transition uh, sort of accelerates, so will the 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 positions open and so we'll, you'll see different uh, variations of positions around engineering. But but when it comes to it, it's all about the digital. It's all about this transformation uh, where you can say uh, a lot of new companies are born digital. Uh, Lego was not born digital, but we acknowledge that in the world where we want to be, uh, where we want to be uh, reaching as many children as possible around the world, we need to have a digital enabled uh, company and work as such. So uh, everything from supporting our supply chain to the consumer engagement uh, domain that we are in, um, the flow through that. So as a consumer, when you uh, engage with us, um, you uh, cannot see how many people, how many different teams, how many streams you find, uh, you have a really good journey uh, through our digital universe and that is where we are going uh, so I won't say there's one or two or three uh, narrowed down positions I will say it's a it's an acceleration of uh, digital capabilities we are looking for um, so don't uh, if you don't see yourself in any of the positions uh, that is uh, currently available please stay tuned uh, many more to come Super, thank you. Next question. What is it you like most about working in digital at the Lego Group? And I think we'll ask Kenneth that one. That's a good question. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, I actually enjoy that I can build stuff that my own kids sometimes get to, to test, at least before when they were younger and, and under the age of 12. Um, before COVID, we were actually able to, to bring our kids to work as long as they were under the age of 12. Um, imagine being an, a nine-year-old boy and being brought to work with your father in a toy factory. 
I think I won Dad of the Year award a few times on that one. Um, but but we have fun. We enjoy what we do, and and from a, uh, a technical standpoint, I, I work with the challenge more or less every day, and I really enjoy it. Yanni, how about you? Just unmuting. Uh, oh yeah, uh, one of the things I thought about when Kenneth talked was um, our user testing. So it's always, you know, when we are at LEGO World where we have some user testing or you know, other user testing, now we need to do it remote because of COVID, but, but when we can actually do it in schools, you, you remember why you do this job because you do it to yeah, make kids happy. Um, and I think that's one of the, the coolest parts about this job is that you make, make kids happy. So this is another question around um, remote working. Um, are you and will you be working remotely or co-located? What about a question again for, for Lise? Yeah, uh, and especially during these times, it's, uh, it's a very relevant. Um, you can say um, the team is the, the smallest unit and, and uh, they are very independent and they're self-organized. And what we experience more than uh, us setting the frames around how much or, or how little or how many days, it's about how the team works. And, and as a team, you go through phases. And, and we know that uh, when you go through exploration or when you, are, you, you serve one of the objectives or problems to solve, um, you can do it uh, because we are working uh, remote, especially under COVID but, but um, using uh, all the digital tools in the world to support us. But there is just something about, you know, standing in front of that whiteboard and uh, brainstorming and challenging each other and bringing those diversity into play that we talked about before. Um, so at, at the moment we are looking at, uh, uh, it is possible to work uh, from home. Definitely we're all doing that. Uh, but within the teams, I see a variety of how much or, or how little. Um, so I'm not going to give a fixed answer on that, but what we are looking at uh, for Copenhagen uh, specifically, and that is why we are, we are in, on this call tonight and meet and greet, uh, is that you are located, um, so you're, it is possible for you to uh, come to the office um, and co-create together with your colleagues, because we are starting up new products, new teams, and we know that from a collaboration perspective, uh, there is a lot of gain in getting the culture and, and really get started. And how that evolves within each team, uh, I will see how the team uh, how the team chooses to work. It's, um, just, just to add on to that one, Lise, I think uh, we, we would be doing the workplace experience team a bit of an injustice if we didn't touch on the, the environments that they, they work to, come to, to create across the LEGO group. And I think they would describe them as fun, um, engaging environments that are designed to create for creativity um, and collaboration. So mm -hmm. I think that's central no matter where you are in the world. So whether you're in campus where we've got the lovely shiny new campus building or whether you're in one of the other hub locations in Singapore, Enfield, mm -hmm. London, etc., or just in a sales office um, as well. So that's, um, that's something that's central to create that environment that's really engaging. Mm -hmm. Super. Next question. How do you usually validate product concepts with kids as the main user group? Is that Yana? Or is it Kenneth? Uh, Can you repeat it, uh, Andy? Sorry. Yeah, of course. How do you usually validate product concepts with kids as the main user group? Very much through the testing. Um, so uh, we used to have very much, you know, uh, uh, testing with uh, physically uh, with the kids. And uh, because of, of COVID, uh, we have gone over to remote uh, testing instead. Um, but we make sure that, you know, we validate, validate actually already on an objective point of view. So even before we go into to design and, and concept work, we validate, you know, is it the right problem we want to solve? Then we start validating hypotheses and um, of course, eventually the concept uh, we validate while we develop. And then of course, after we have launched, we keep testing the products because we want the products to continue to be better and better. Um, so it's a very, very big part of, of our work. Amazing. 
Well, I'm going to jump on because we've got quite a few questions to get through. Um, so we've covered, um, or Lisa, this might be a quick answer from you. Can you tell us just a little bit more about the Digital Copenhagen office? Yes, uh, that's actually a broad question. Uh, we are refurbishing it right now uh, to modern uh, standards and legal uh, ways of working, actually, because the whole um, feeling, uh, the way we want you to feel when you walk into that office is uh, a lot about the playfulness, the kids is our uh, mentors and role models. Um, uh, but it's also the agile ways of working. So we are sitting uh, co-located uh, within uh, product teams uh, with our uh, huge demo space. So you can invite who you want when you uh, want to do demos. We have, of course, also Cisco uh, or uh, rooms equipped um, to um, if you want to do remote uh, meetings. Um, we have social areas uh, or informal areas where you can hang out. We have phone booths if you need uh, quiet time or having a, a meeting online where you want to sit. Um, uh, it's going to be a, a great canteen, uh, but that's uh, separated from it. Um, yeah, so it's it's brand new. So the furniture, uh, it's uh, the smell of paint, I was going to say. It is really starting. It's an old building on, when you look at it, it's one of those uh, uh, wonderful old uh, co uh, buildings in Copenhagen, a historical building. But when you come into it, uh, it, it will open up as a Lego universe uh, uh, office space, as you know it from, uh, if you have been to any of our locations around the world. Um, I don't know if that answer it, but it, it's catering for the for the agile ways of working uh, with product team or an area, you know, to stand up area, your work area, uh, your informal area, uh, and then areas where you can meet, um, do demos, and, and be social. Fab, and we've got <clears throat> Lena's just commented to say it's still important to have good food. So canteen <laughs> is important, right? And lots um, of coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So next question, we'll, we'll, we'll quickly run through the remaining ones. So how is Lego building and maintaining? Um, oh, how is Lego building and maintaining the corporate design system? Sorry, That's Anna. me, and I just gave uh, no, no. I just gave Vigo an ice cream, so I've got ten minutes now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah. So as I mentioned in in my short uh, intro, we have a, a design system, and and the one we are doing is for consumer facing products. Um, we are not doing all consumer facing products within DAD, so we make sure that this is where we. Um, work together with the, the designers in other parts of the organization, so we have one truth. That being said, it's still super difficult. And uh, when I came back from maternity leave, we were doing three redesigns, which I would say was not an aligned. So I think, you know, this is a constant challenge. We're still working on it. Um, we make sure every decision we put in the design system is tested with kids, because again, that's that's the one truth we can, we can do. Um, um, yeah, I hope it, it's a longer, I think, uh, answer needed, but but that's at least a few words on it. So let me just scan through the questions that we've got because I think some of them may be um, may be answered already. Um, are you using any Luma human-centered design methods to understand child ad child or adult experiences? <clears throat> Is that a design question for for you again, um, Yana? Oh, it's a good question, and actually, I, I maybe wanted to to uh, have that person elaborate a bit on it, and that's not that easy on this one. So, um, yeah, I think that's one to come back on. Sorry, cool. no problem. That's absolutely fine. Um, more question for maybe Kenneth in the next one. So, how do you align organization architecture um, with your software architecture with respect to Conway? <sighs> That's a pretty broad question. Can I help? <laughs> Christian's going to come in. <laughs> it's actually a very good question. And to some extent, we, as I think most organizations, are also kind of uh, suffering a little bit under Conway's law. Um, so, so in general, we are trying to build, you know, um, a very flexible uh, architecture and a very uh, an architecture that can also be shared across organizational units. So it's not like every 
organizational unit kind of built their own architecture. That being said, and you can probably even see that to, to be quite honest in some of our experiences out there, there is some element of Conway's law in that can be recognized maybe when you look at some of our liberal com, at least in the past. We are definitely trying to break that uh, pattern, but it's not necessarily something we have done fully yet, but we are aware of it at least. And, and we are also trying to, in general, design an architecture that is is more headless, we can say, and kind of doesn't enforce the patterns that you normally see in Conway's law. Again, that was a little bit of a broad answer, but um, yeah, that's... Well, super, that's great. I've just, whilst you were talking there, Christian, I was going through some of the questions. Um, so looking at um, how do you perform remote user research with, um, with children during COVID-19? Again, that's you've answered that one already, really, Yanni. Is there anything you want to add on to that one? No. No, I yeah, I think I covered it. That yeah, it was basically impossible. But I mean, the good thing is that suddenly we explored different ways of of testing. Uh, so it it also came with something uh, something good. Cool. A question for Lisa then. In Copenhagen, will you be looking for mostly senior positions, or will there eventually be more junior positions available? And thank you, because uh, I know if you look through the open positions right now, it looks like uh, a lot of seniority. Uh, but we are looking uh, for what we call the talent pipeline. So behind the scenes, there are also positions uh, not as senior as the ones we have put up. And uh, we are looking uh, into uh, next year also getting student workers. And you will see as uh, we get more and more colleagues over there that uh, the recruitment pipeline will open up uh, from a uh, junior and entry level student workers and uh, uh, like we have in uh, in all of the areas but to start with because it's a it's a product team or actually two we're looking for uh, we know and uh, the these will be the positions we'll grow from uh, and mentoring from uh, so that's why the seniority level seems a bit heavy but that's not how it will continue Amazing. Now, we've got a couple of minutes left for a couple of other questions. Um, so I think this is more about culture, which I think is super important. So how do you ensure that the Copenhagen offices are this, have the same innovative culture as they do in Billund? I think that's probably um, applicable to any of our hub locations across the world, right? But you know, what's, what, what effort has been put into um into Copenhagen, Lisa, for that one to ensure that there's synergies between both Copenhagen and um, and Billund. First of all, all attracting the right talent, the one with the adoptive mindset, but also a learning mindset and uh, curiosity is the key. So uh, in, in practical, we will, uh, when you start, and it doesn't matter where you start, you'll always have what we call a brick mate, who will introduce you to the Lego ways of working, are both uh, the functional side, so um, uh, what is our, our you can say, uh, ways of working, uh, both the agile ways of working, but also the architectural principles, and there are some software uh, or platforms that we have chosen to work uh, with uh, as a company. Uh, but we also have the cultural side. Um, how do we foster an environment where you can be curious and bring your strengths um, into play. Um, so we will man up and uh, with colleagues and, and co-workers from the office here in Bilon uh, when we start uh, ramping up in Copenhagen. And uh, and as we are uh, here today online, a lot of the activities is across not only Bilon Copenhagen, but also uh, towards our nearshore partners and our business partners, the uh, typically uh, um, the product owner who can be sitting in various locations. I don't think there is one rule to cover them all here or one golden key that will solve that. It's hard work. Uh, it's about being uh, conscious about that the, there will be a challenge if we don't address it and always be mindful uh, if we see uh, different movements or things are not working, but I also think we can learn from each other. So getting the right talent in, the great onboarding, and uh, quickly establish a network uh, of peers and colleagues uh, to move. Super. Is, uh, <clears throat> Super. We've got one um, question left. I've got 30 seconds. I don't know who wants to take this one, but 
How do you follow the best design um, practices while staying agile? Um, that's a good question. I, I don't know if it's, it was meant from the design uh, point of view, but I can say a little bit in general terms at least. So what we are trying to do um, is actually, as also mentioned a little bit in, in earlier in this uh, meeting, that we are trying to kind of integrate design uh, into our overall teams. So we are, you know, so our designers and our UX is part of our agile team, so to speak. We are very much focused not to have kind of a, an, a waterfall within agile where design kind of comes and build the concepts that it then ship to some developers that are building it and then shipped again to um, to maybe some some test engineers that are testing it. All these people sit in the same team and collaborate uh, on a daily basis. Um, I think some of the question was maybe also around the design system. So how do we kind of keep a design system while working in in this way that we do in our teams? And uh, maybe that's better you answer that, Jana, I guess. If you yeah, and it's, good, I think, answer. a long answer and we don't have a lot of time, but I can say, you know, we are trying to to set up some some design leads who have some responsibility of looking abroad uh, on the products because otherwise we design in isolation. Um, but I think, yeah, it's a, a long, long question and we're running out of time. But but I think we are doing pretty well, to, to be honest. Uh, the challenge is maybe more, you know, on, on marketing obje objectives versus design ethics. And that's, again, a complete different story. Okay. Sorry, Andy. I'll, no, that's I'll stop great. Talking. Don't, don't. <laughs> that's great. Great answers. Guys, I just wanted to say thank you very much to all of our speakers today. Um, it leaves us just with one, one thing to end on. Um, thank you for um, you signing up um, and, and joining us today. It's been great to have um, such a global audience. Um, three things we wanted to talk to you about. Um, you know, follow us on LinkedIn, follow us on glassdoor.com and all of our jobs are advertised on lego.com forward slash careers. So take a look, there's um, opportunities both in the digital um, office in Copenhagen and across our digital business and across the Lego group um, in its entirety. So feel free to take a look and thank you very much once again. Bye. Bye.